Hello humans, my name is Kenyo and I upload and oh, today's video is gonna be pretty cool. So do you remember my last video when I showed you how to install the control net extension and where I showed you how to easily transfer the pose of a character from a photo to another character using the open pose model? Well, wouldn't it be nice if you could have any character in any pose that you want and then transfer that pose to another character? Well, actually, you can. And you can do all of that and more with some easy to use 3D softwares that you can use online for absolutely free. And personally, I've been having a lot of fun these last few days. Whoa, 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 whoa. Five minutes later. Whoa, 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 whoa. Um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, so yeah, let's go. So as I said, in this video, we're going to be using some free 3D softwares that we're going to use to pose a character in any position that we want and then use that character's pose inside Stable Diffusion. And what's really cool is that all of these softwares run in your browser. You don't need to install anything. And the two websites that we're going to be using today are called Magic Poser and Pose My Art. Of course, the link for these websites will be in the description down below. And to use them, it is very, very simple. For Magic Poser, you just come here on the home page and then click on Magic Poser Lite. And now you are transported into an infinite 3D area with a character that you can pose in any way that you want which is so cool. And for the other website, posemy.art, you can just come here on the home page and then click here on open pose my art. And just like the other one, we have now a 3D space with a character that we can pose in any way that we want. Now, personally, I really like the Magic Poser website because it is extremely easy to use. It is way easier to pose than the other website because it has inverted kinematic. But at the same time, compared to the other website, it also lacks a lot of features that I'm going to be showing you later on. But what's really cool with this website is that if you want to pose your character, you could just, for example, grab an extremity and then move it around and place it anywhere you want. It is really super easy to use. And in only a few clicks, you can pose your character in pretty much any position that you want. Hey everybody, hello, what's up? Hey guys, it's me. Yes, yeah, sorry, I've been having a lot of fun with these characters. Now, in terms of control, it is very simple. You basically have three buttons and everything is done with your mouse. So the left click is basically like the rotate camera that allows you to kind of rotate around the character up and down. The middle mouse button allows you to zoom in and out and the left click allows you to move left, right and up and down. So even if you haven't used a 3D software before, it is actually really easy to use. And as you can see, our character has a lot of different shapes on his body, like spheres, cubes, pyramids. And each one of these shapes basically represents a joint that you can move around to pose it in any position that you want. Except like the triangle pyramids that allows you to basically swivel the limbs, which is again super useful if you want to pose it in a certain direction. Also, each time that you click on joint, a new option here appears called rotate. And if you click on it, it gives you like this kind of weird circles of different colors and it allows you to rotate the joint into another direction. And the direction is represented by the color of the circle. So for example, if I click on the blue circle, it allows me to rotate it up and down. If I click on the red circle, it allows me to rotate it left to right. And if I click on the green, it allows me to rotate it to another direction. So again, with all of these tools, you can basically put them in any position that you want, even if it's humanly impossible. Ouch, that's, that's gonna hurt. Sorry, buddy. Also, if you click on the character, you have now a bunch of new options that appears, such as view, the color, where you can change the color of your character to any color character that you want. You have the hair option, if you want to add hair to your character. You have the lock option that allows you to lock your character in place. Don't forget to unlock it to be able to pose it again. You have the transform tool that allows you to move it left to right or scale it up and down. The preset that allows you to use any pose preset that is already available for you for free in this software. And there is a quite a few of them, but not as much compared to the other one, you'll see later why. But still with this, you can have a lot of options already done for you. Like for example, the super famous draw me like one of your French girls pose. Or even the super famous help me, I've fallen and I can't get up. We've all been there, buddy. We've all been there. Then you have the hand pose option, which is basically the exact same as the preset pose, but this time it allows you to change the pose in position of your fingers, which again is really super useful and really super cool. Then you have the duplicate option, if you want to, for example, duplicate and clone your character, in another position, so you can have multiple characters doing the exact same thing or doing different poses. So you can have them in very weird poses like this. Oh man, so he was allergic to peanut butter. <laughs> uh, anyway. 
So then you have the replace option, where you can easily replace the character with another model. So let's say you want some anime girl, for example. You can easily do that, just replacing the character and it will stay in the exact same position that you left her. And there is a few models available, like the anime girl, anime boy, the woman, the man, another version of a woman, and a version of a woman with a big head. And then finally you have the remove button, that allows you to easily remove evidence. And now as you can see our character is happy that it's not gonna go in prison. Well, not this time at least. And when it comes to the other website, Pose My Art, it is very similar to the first one, but it is maybe a little bit more harder to use. Because every single joint needs to be moved separately. So it does take a little bit more time to pose your character effectively into a position that you like. But in reality, that's not really a problem because technically everything is already done for you. Because if you select your character and you click here on animations and poses, you will see a bunch of animations and poses for you to use for any situation that you need. There are way more positions than in the first website. And you can practically find anything that you need. And what's really great for example is that for the animation part, if you select one for example, you will see the full animation play out as a loop, but each and every position of that animation can be stopped, can be paused, and then used as is. So technically all you really need is just look at an animation, look at every pose of that animation, and if there is a pose that you like, for example let's say that for this animation I like when the character is in the air doing the flip, and I want to pose it right here, let's say I want this position, well I could just use it like that, which is really super easy. So yes, this website is a little bit more harder to use, a little bit more harder to pose, but at the same time it has so many presets to use that you technically don't need to pose anything. Everything will be done for you. So yeah, just play around a little bit with these websites, they are really easy to use and really fun, and they both allow you to create some really cool poses. So then, once we have created our pose, how exactly are we gonna use that inside Stable Diffusion, you ask? Well, it's very simple. We're gonna be using the control net models to transfer the pose to another character using the pose that we created in the 3D software. Because all we really need is a pose and a screenshot of that pose. Simple as that. Because all you need to do, once you have your pose that you're happy with, you're gonna find a good angle for that pose. So let's say for example in my case I want it like this for example. Okay, so I think I like this pose in this angle. And now I'm gonna come here, click on toggle, and I'm gonna hide the ground guidelines. And then I'm gonna click on preview. And as you can see now everything is hidden, every joint is hidden from the body, and all you have to do now is just make a screenshot of the pose. So I'm personally using a software called Lightshot because I like it, so I'm gonna select this entire image and then click on save. And then for the ease of use I'm just gonna edit the image, then come here and crop it as a square, just like this, and then click on save. Then finally, inside Stable Diffusion, in Image to Image, I'm gonna upload my image, activate the Control Net option, and again, if you don't know what this is, if you haven't watched my last video, you should definitely watch it before you see this video, otherwise you're not gonna understand anything. So watch this first, then in Preprocessor, I'm gonna choose Open Pose, Model Open Pose, just resize, then upload the same image again, select a stable diffusion model, write a prompt, in my case I would like to have a cute woman sitting down, wearing a white shirt and blue jeans, and then finally I can click on generate. And this is the final result. As you can see, the open pose model created this outline of the different limbs and their different positions, and it has transferred all those data into a new character. And if our character's face is a little messed up, you can simply set it to impaint, impaint over the face, choose only masked with a 768 by 768 resolution, a very low denoising strength, and then click on generate. And this is the final result. A little bit better, but it would be even better if you can just send it to extra, upscale it using Lexos, click generate, send to impaint again, then impaint the face again, maybe increase the resolution a little bit, and then click generate again. And now as you can see, this is much, much better. And you can do that with every part of the body. And as you can see, in only a few seconds, we went from a 3D pose inside a free 3D software running on your browser to generating in full beautiful 2D image using Stable Diffusion, with the character in the exact same pose as the 3D character. And you can do that with any pose that you want. This trick is really super powerful. Now what's really great is that you don't necessarily need to use the open pose model. You can actually use other models to get different results. So for example, if I choose this pose right here and I take a screenshot, so then if I come here and upload my image, then in Control Net select the Canny preprocessor and the Canny model, 
Then again, upload the same image, then write your prompt. In my case, I would like to see a medieval female warrior laying down. And if I click on generate, it gives me something like this. As you can see, the Kenny model created this character outline around our character and used that as a base to generate a brand new image. And now our character is in the exact same position. And again, just like in my previous video, if you want to see more stylization for the character, you can just come here, decrease the weight a little bit, let's put it at 0.55, and then click on generate again. And as you can see, now we have way more stylization for our character, but we're still keeping the exact same position. So it really gives you a lot of possibility to make great images. And then just like the other one, if you want to have better quality around the face, around the armor, and stuff like that, you can just click on send to extra, upscale it with Lexos, click generate, then send to impaint, Impaint over the area that you want to change, select only masked, decrease the denoising strength, keep a high resolution, and then click generate. And as you can see with this trick, we get perfect faces all of the time. Now, as I said earlier, you can also create scenes with multiple characters. By using the duplicate option, you can create something like two characters, pose them in a different way, make a screenshot of that, then again in Stable Diffusion, you're gonna come here, upload your image, in Control Net, you're gonna choose the Midas preprocessor, and the depth model, maybe again decrease that to 0.55, upload the image again here, write your prompt, so in my case it's like photo of two people, one lying down, one standing up, and then click on generate. And this is the final result, and as you can see that's created this kind of, well, a little weird and suspicious image, I'm not gonna lie. And as you can see, using like the depth model, it has created this depth map of these two characters in different positions, and it has used all of that information to generate this brand new image. And if, for example, you want to put it in a different place, in a different situation, you can simply put that in your prompt. So in my case, I will simply put something like inside a flower garden, and then click on generate. And this is the final result. So the body is definitely a little weird here, so you could probably make it better with like some in-painting. And again, you can also refine his face, it may be part of the background, but as I said, this is really just an example of what's actually possible. And finally, here's a little trick that you can use to get better hands in your picture. So first you're gonna pose your character's hand so that it's clearly visible in the picture. Then you can choose a preset for the hand, let's say something like this. Then you're gonna make a screenshot, save the image. So then again, it's still diffusion and you're gonna upload your image. In control net, you're gonna choose the Midas preprocessor and the depth model. Increase that weight a little bit to like something like 0.65. Then upload the image again. Then write your prompt. In my case, we'll like a cute woman doing a peace sign with her left hand with long blonde hair and a red dress. And if I click on generate, it gives me something like this. Really, really cool. As you can see, the hands and fingers are perfectly generated. And that is because of the depth model. As you can see, this model created this perfect outline for each finger, which made the generation of these fingers for this image very easy. And again, just for like the other images, you can do that with any pose that you want. And all of that for absolutely free. And that's really, really cool. And there you have it, folks. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.